the Big and Big Right Writer Breakfast with Rick Mulcahy on Cork's 96 and 103 FM. Now, Jerry Brown is Brendan O'Carroll's right-hand man, Brendan being one of Ireland's top comedians, playwrights and authors. The lads were on tour with a play and they were in Sligo. Meanwhile, Jerry Brown and his wife Colette were having their house finished in Dublin. The house has been fraught with problems. Colette was looking after everything and kind of passing the problems on to Jerry. Well, Jerry got this particular problem direct to the hotel. Silver Swan Hotel, good afternoon. Hello, is that the Silver Swan Hotel? That's right. I'm looking for Jerry Brown, please. Oh, yeah, just a moment. You'll be through now in a second. Thanks a million. Oh, hold on, hold on. He's just getting a photograph taken here with the staff. Is he a bit of a celebrity or something? Oh, he tell you he has everything a woman wants. Oh, really? That's uh, one of the girls that's leaving, you know. Jerry! Here. He's with you now. Thanks. Where are you guys? In Sligo, is it? Huh? Are you in Sligo Town or what? Yeah. Hello. Is that Mr. Browzoni? Hello. Mr. Browzoni, please. No, it's Mr. Brown. Oh, Mr. Brown. Oh, sorry, I'm getting mixed up with the uh, the name of the house there and your own name. Yeah, it's uh, Brazoni House. Yeah, that's that's me. Right. Jerry Brown is my name. And is is it Castle Street or Ned Nolte's Lane? Uh, it's actually Castle Street. Well, I'm there anyway. I better You're there. Int- I better introduce myself. I'm Ken Hutton from Des Kelly Carpets. Ken, yeah. And uh, we're outfitting the carpets in your house. Yeah, yeah. No, I was talking to your wife, Colette. That's right, yeah. And she went away to collect the uh, children from school or something, I don't That's know. That's right, the young lad, yeah. And she came back and she went ballistic. She nearly ate me. She nearly ate you, why? Well, I was putting down carpets as per Des's instructions, you know. Only the, only the best is going in. Now, the blue carpet with the border. Yeah. Yeah, okay, it's a Navin Balfour carpet. That's right, yeah. And it's a 401 1687. It's the one with the border. Oh, jeez, I, I wouldn't have a clue anyway, Ken. Yeah, anyway, that's the one that Des said was a top class dining room carpet. So uh, I went and put it into the dining room. No, no, it's, it's not the dining room carpet. Well, he's, it, it's a dining room carpet, is what he said to me, but I thought he, he meant to put it in the dining room, you know what I mean? So, uh, so that's exactly what I did. And um, when your wife came home there, she went ballistic. Yeah, ho- yeah, hold on, Ken. Are you telling me w- that you put. The blue carpet with the border into the dining room. Yeah, it was a lovely wooden floor there. I thought it was a shame to cover it up. But that's where I put it, and it looks lovely now, I must say. You didn't put... You say, what, hold on a second. You put the carpet over the new wooden floor. Well, it didn't look new to me. Of course it's new. So it's only in a week and a half. Well, I don't know. I, I thought it was a dining room I was putting it into, and that's what Des told me to do, you know. I can't go back to him now. Hold on a second. Are you telling me that you put the blue carpet with the border on top of the new wooden floor? Well, that's what I'm telling you, but your wife didn't like it either, I have to say. Uh, yes, I have to tell you, I don't like it either. You're going to have to get it up. Well, there's not much point in taking it up. It fits lovely now, but if I take it up, it's not going to fit in the other room. No, no, no. Let's... Hold on a second. The reason we put down the wooden uh, the wooden floor is because we wanted a wooden floor in there. I know, but this one does... That's not for that room. Take my word for it, Mr. Brown. This this one does look better. <laughs> it, it does look. Listen, you're would, you not go for another, would you not go for another colour in, in, in the big room? Are you trying to listen? What was ordered was the wooden floor for the dining room and the blue carpet with the border is for the back room. No, I'll tell you, no, the rest of it is oxo like. I've got the office done in the main bedroom and uh, I've it down here, Sarah's room and Arden's room. Yeah. They're all done as well. Yeah, um, but that's all right. Listen, that's nothing to do with it. You must be a wealthy man, Mr. Brown, to be putting carpet in your utility room as well. It's a fine house, by the way. You must be making lots of bobs. I think this fellow's on drugs, Brett. Hold on a second, Ken. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to take the carpet up. I hope that thing is not damaged. Well, I can't take it up. I'm after tacking it to the bleeding floor. Well, I'll tell you this much. If you don't take it up, I'll tack you to the bleeding wall. Get that. You want to get that up? So what did Colette say? Well, she went ballistic because she 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 realises, like, when because she, she's on site with me, like, she realised that if I pull this up, uh, the nails coming out of the floor will damage the timber. The carpet nails have gone down into the timber floor. <laughs> How long are you working with Des Kelly? Ah, uh, about two weeks. Oh, for f- Well, that's the like of it, huh? Well, listen, Ken, the only thing I can tell you, two weeks with him. Is there nobody else with you in the van? There's normally two guys who are. No, he, he sent me out my own. He said, he said that Jerry Browden is easily pleased, so that wouldn't be a problem. I'm actually over here in Sligo. I want you to take up the carpet, because if you don't take it up, when I get home, I'll take it up, and Desi can swing for his money. But, you, but you'll damage the floor if you do. F- the floor. You're going to have... Listen, just get the carpet up out of there. It's not for that room. Is your wife Italian, is she? What? Is your wife Italian? 
Yeah, she is, yeah. Oh, that's where the that's where the brow Zoni comes in. Has she got a Zoni in the end of her name, yeah? Yeah, friend Zoni. Well, boy, what's that got to do with it? That'll explain her temper. She's mental. Mental in there. I don't believe and blame her. Ken, you just come here, you're putting down a, a fortune I paid for that carpet. And you're putting it down into the wrong room. Listen, is it... Are you on a, a drug rehab program or something, are you? I can put it in the other room, but it'll be a kind of a border. Yeah, wherever you bleed and like. You, but you get it over there. There'll be a kind of a border then around it, where because it's not going to meet the wall on all four sides, Listen, you know? So where, where's Colette? Uh, she's in the house. I couldn't get a signal in the house, so I had to come out to the van. <laughs> do you mind if I leave it there and just like talk I to... I do, De- yeah. I, I do mind if you leave it there. Just oh, like I talk do. to Des, like. What, what did you say her second name was? When the Des Kelly van comes down your street. Are you the guy who does that ad on, oh, on, yeah, yeah, on, on the radio? Right. Yeah. I have you now. Oh, you're Brendan O'Carroll's buddy, are you? That's me, yeah. Are, are you the fellow who was causing all that bother over in Liverpool? Oh, for f- sake. Listen. Are you, the, no- are you the fellow who got ticked with the cops over there? Oh, Jesus, tonight. Listen, not half as ticked as I'm going to get with you. I'll tell you what to do. You Listen, you just hang on there now for... How long are you going to be there? Could you not walk through the airport without giving him lip? Fairness. Are you for real, man, are you? Maybe if you spoke to your wife, you could calm her down a bit. Listen, I'll tell you what to do. I want you out of that house. I don't know who gave you the job. I don't know why you got the job. But if there's any damage done to my house, believe me, my friend, I will be calling down to see you. Ken, what's your, what's your second name? Ken Hutton, come here. It's a lovely carpet you have got in your main bedroom there. Sexy stuff. Try sexy, Mr. Browden. Are you on bleeding drugs or something? Are no, you? I'm on Cork's Big Breakfast. How are you, Jerry? Who's that? Mick Mulcahy, good morning. Mick Mulcahy. Oh, Mick! How you doing? <laughs> I was three Mick. hours on the phone trying to set this up, Jerry. Yeah, between back. talking to Des Kelly, between talking to your wife, Colette, and talking to Connor Brett here in Cork for the details. Uh, Mick Con- Mulcahy, you are one sick man. Do you know that? I sure I know. I have to tell you, this is no kidding. I'm actually standing here in the fire of the hotel here in Sligo. And I'm actually been ripping up paper, and I'm writing down your name, and I'm going, right, call Des, call him. Thank you, an awful man. <laughs> well, I had to get you after you caught Brendan, so. <laughs> Jerry, thanks a million. Give my regards to all the okay. cast. Okay, I will, of course, Mick. Cheers. See you, Mick. Thanks. Man. Morning. Bye bye.